today in the garden, we're going to be viewing the um, McLeod County Fairgrounds garden that's maintained by the Hutchinson Garden Club. And we're here today with Nancy McGraw and Gail Fobson. And they've been both been longtime members of the Garden Club. Um, I was for many years until <laughs> something had to give. I'm not getting any younger. So they're going to talk to us a little bit about Garden Club. And this is uh, well, the main bed they take care of here at the fairgrounds. They also have one, um, a median bed on Roberts Road and Dale Street that takes a lot of time and effort. You guys want to maybe tell us a little bit about how do you fund the plants you buy for this bed in Roberts Road? Okay. Um, we really do use a lot of money to get these flowers. They're, they're costly, but, uh, but what happens is we raise our own flowers at home and then we pot those and then we have a large sale in the spring. And now this year we're probably having one in the fall, the way it sounds to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's where our money actually comes from. And so it's hard work on our part to raise the flowers, and the money, and then sell them. And we have really good luck with our customers that come in. And believe me, they, they buy us out in about an hour's time. So if you haven't been to one of our flower sales, be sure you don't miss it next time. <laughs> yeah, we had to cancel the spring one, unfortunately. Due to COVID because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So we're all learning to live with a new reality, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. I'm the treasurer for the Hutchinson Garden Club, so to give everybody an idea of what this might cost, we spend well over $700 on the um, median garden over at Roberts Road, and this is between two and $300 that we put in here because it's mostly perennials. Unfortunately, we can't put perennials in the city garden because they like to till that up every fall and make sure it's flat in the winter when people are driving by. And we're really thankful for that, that the city works with us on this, and so we don't have to do all that hard labor ourselves necessarily. Mm -hmm. so, okay, do you yeah. ever have any problems with plants disappearing from your beds? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the last two years we have had yeah. uh, plants going out of the garden about a week after we've planted them. We lost 12 this year and unfortunately when we go back to repurchase we can no longer get the um, wholesale price so then we were paying about um, six six it was a little over six dollars a plant with tax by the time we replaced 12 of them um, so I guess somebody is finding a nice pot of flowers for themselves. I'm not so you sure why. That, you hear that, people? These ladies are working hard to provide enjoyment for the city. So leave the plants alone. Go get your right. own. Right. I think that sometimes I have the feeling that people think that this is a city garden and that uh, they pay for it with their taxes or whatever. And so therefore, maybe they just help themselves. But that is not a fact. I mean, these flowers are all, are all purchased and by um, money from our own plant sales. So. So it is a, a lot of work, but, and by the way, anyone who wants to join us and uh, help with all this work, we're here for you. Right. <laughs> they would welcome you, as would the Master Gardeners. Yes. Both groups would love to have new people. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, with that said, I think mm -hmm. we'll maybe start a little bit on talking about the bed here. Um, the front is nearly is planted with annuals, mm -hmm. for, so you've got constant color all through mm -hmm. the summer. And then the rest are perennials, either purchased or that came from members' gardens and have been planted in here and, and divided, split, moved, maintained all, you know. Um, Nancy and I were talking earlier, trying to remember, and I'm thinking this bed, that the garden club took this bed over, it was shortly after I had joined the garden club, which I think was about 25 years ago, okay. somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think this bed has been maintained by them for about... 25 years, uh, which is kind of a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's you know gone through a lot of changes. Um, the charter school came in, and for a, a spring project, they came in, and if you get down to the steeper end down there, you can see they dug it out, and we made tiers. So starting on this end, I hear, I see we've got some of the cat mint that no one knows seems to know the name of for sure, and the purpley. We've got Rebecca's, um, a, globe loose, a globe spruce over there. Lots of big asters towards the back that will be gorgeous 
come fall. So if I think you haven't up driven blue. through the fairgrounds, you might want to make a trip just to see what's all in here. Um, I see day lilies, the asters, sedum, a whole row of sedum, which is another brilliant spot of color in the fall. And we've got, I see some shasta daisies coming in here, a little lamium, uh, the petunias, and the uh, tiger's eye sumac seems to do quite well on that dry hillside yeah. there. That's really bright and colorful. Yeah, it provides a in nice fall. back. And the, you know, when the weather starts cooling, it really shows off its colors. Okay. And then I think we can maybe just move down the bed a little bit. Last year we tried to plant some a new variety of daisies in here, and this is a Sante daisy, Shasta daisy, and we had nine plants. As you can see, only one came back, so now we're debating on whether we should replace them, or um, we had wild oxeye daisies all over the place, but it, they're really hard to control once they start self-seeding. So we'll see if this one looks really healthy. I wish we had oh, I know. nine more, <laughs> but it was a really wet year we when we planted these know. last spring. And then up, up above, this is this orange one is a Maltese cross, and we see that we have a couple um, parts of it that have moved into the yarrow, the yellow yarrow. But we think the orange and yellow might be kind of pretty together, so we're just yes. going to leave it there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> You wanted well, to talk a little about the iris, too. Well, in the spring, this is a really pretty garden to drive by because all of the iris all along, mm -hmm. we have many different colors. I think we have a dark brown, which I had never seen before, a dark purple, lavender, yellows, um, and, so the, and then mm -hmm. I think there are some stripes, yellow, uh, lavender and white, and they're just really, when they're all in bloom, they're very beautiful. We, we had... Um, an idea that we finally should be dividing them again because I think it's been over our three to five year oh. timeline, <laughs> but we didn't get them labeled by color, so we have to do that next spring so we know what colors we're digging up and then we'll divide them and spread them out again a little bit because mm -hmm. they're becoming pretty root bound now. And then another project we've started is trying to put mulch down kind of between rows and, and establish some pathways so it's easier to get in there and weed. Our gals are not getting any younger and they want to not have to spend hours and hours in here. So um, we've, we've decided if we mulch um, pretty well, then they know where they're weeding and where they're not weeding. Because we, we have a lot of new members and they're not always sure if we have a weed or a flower coming up. Sometimes we just have to let them grow for a while and then we discover what they are. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've added a little, a few perennials right in this area. Uh, I think we used to have some um, perennials in here and then they must have died out. We did move the rose bush a few years ago that's right near the front there. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're, we're just, when we get openings, we try to fill them in with something and and maybe have a little bit of a plan as to what colors are there and, and what looks good with each other. The middle part where Joyce is going, um, we just recently amended all of that soil and when you amend you add um, different types. We, we went and bought peat moss and we bought uh, compost and then I had a, a couple of pail, five gallon pails full of old potting soil and we just dumped all of that on there and mixed it up and then dug it in and you try to dig down a good foot or so so it mixes with the the soil that's already there uh, and and just lightens everything up and and the perennials when they get planted really like amended soil better than the hard uh, regular dirt mm -hmm. or soil there's a lot of clay lot, yes we find a lot of clay yeah. In, in this dirt if we get down um, to a certain level. We just planted in here, um, I don't know if they show up, um, but these are three new Cranesville geraniums called uh, Roseanne. And eventually, I guess they'll be about three times taller, so they'll be up and hopefully show. And then we're trying to figure out some other things uh, to put in here. Way up in this section, we have a grass that's blue. Is that a blue stem? 
Can you see, Small, Joyce? The smaller one back there? Yes. yes. That, that looks like a blue stem. This one, I don't know if it shows up. It's right under there. And we might bring that out and put it um, in the front and center because it's kind of a nice contrast with all the other things. And up, up in the back here, we have a Rebecca. Well, when we planted this, uh, when we had the charter school kids help us, that the next two years we planted and uh, we, we got a lot of the Rebecca's and they were all different kinds. We, we have some of the more old-fashioned ones coming here and they kind of have migrated because they were all in the front but now we have a clump way back here and as you go that way in the garden you'll see that they, they're migrating especially into our pathway and we're going to have to um, move some of those. That'll be another topic to talk about, right? Yeah. <laughs> Lots so, of uh, uh -huh. leotros just about ready to come into right. bloom up here, too. Right. And then bee balm or monardia, is that what we call monardia? our red? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, is this the old-fashioned uh, Shasta Daisy, or is it a different, a Becky, maybe? Because it looks a little um, different. I mean, I, I, you know, to tell you which one it is, my Becky has much wider leaves, so I don't think it's Becky. Okay. And then once once uh, the, the daylilies behind are blooming, those are also red, so there will be um, a lot of color. Um, one project that we are working on and that we hope will happen this summer is our, we're going to have our pathway redone. Uh, one of the Boy Scouts in town needs a... Eagle Scout project, and so he's he's hoping to build us some good paver steps in a couple of spots, and then lay pavers, and we would go all the way out to the south end of the garden, and then there'll be a couple steps down there too. Um, we need to make it a little more safer for us old ladies to move around in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so <laughs> these ladies work on all of these plants. They have uh, one thing always in mind, and that is sort of like a color wheel. And so you have your reds, you've got your yellows, you have your blues, and they are not all right together in one spot. They're broken up and they're scattered around. So you can kind of look at it and you say to yourself, this is a wheel, this is a wheel of color. And I think it's pretty, pretty authentic in what I see here because of the beautiful reds up here with the marnarda up here in the back. And then we have our purples right here with the, the salvia in this area. And then, uh, and all the yellows that are tossed in, uh, like the yarrow down that way, and as she talked about. And then when we go back to, down to uh, Roberts Road, and we'll be talking about, uh, if we are, get a chance to talk to you there, it's also all about setting up things in, in uh, like a color chart. So we think about our colors all the time, and so there's, it's partly because Nancy is a quilter, and I'm a watercolor painter, so we put our ideas together when we develop a garden. Now this particular garden is more of a perennial garden, so you don't have a whole lot of uh, start from scratch kind of thing. We just use whatever we all come up with. But uh, at Robert's uh, Road down here, that starts from scratch. And so we sit down, Nancy and I do together, and we plan out this whole thing. So it's just really wonderful how everyone puts it together and uses what they have at home and makes this the most marvelous garden. To me, it looks like uh, like we're, like it's an English garden, how I say. <laughs> like what you might see on television. So we're just so thankful all our members and what they and what they have. Also, I don't think it's been mentioned that we do have some people who uh, uh, contribute plants to our sale too, uh, outside of the garden club. Uh, Jerry Brown has been a and just a fantastic source of plants for our sales. So we're thankful to him that uh, he contributes to us and we're able to sell those and turn around and buy beautiful plants for our gardens. You might see the little orange sticks or tags oh, yeah. on the top of and that uh, tells us the sections because we divide up into teams of three or more and, uh, and then that team is supposed to take care of their section. Um, we find though that we have more fun if we do have a group weeding. We, we did that last Tuesday and we had about uh, eight or nine gals here and we just spread out 
uh, social distanced and, and tried to work through. And, um, and for some of our newer members, it, the hardest part is trying to figure out if it's a flower or a weed. Yeah, so yep. we're, we're getting there. We're re they're starting to recognize um, what have our flowers that have been here for a long time. Um, and we, we probably are learning, too, that when we planted this all many years ago, we have quite a few plants that like to move around. And maybe we don't like that so much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so what was a good we thing do. once. Yeah. yeah. Has become a Gives us lots of color popping up every which way. <laughs> oh yeah, these Leatris, I don't think that was mentioned yet. Not. These tall stemmies right here, they look like the little thin stems. And they will just become beautiful in the fall coming up. And uh, those may be lavender. Yeah, there is one even it's kind blooming of already. Oh yeah, there's one right there. Yeah. I think there's both white and the, the lavenderish purple in there. Oh yeah, there's one of those weeds we're talking about up in there. That uh, <laughs> I mentioned. Tail. Yeah. We kind of pulled one of those out earlier. <laughs> and once we start on this pathway, um, when the Boy Scouts come, we've got a lot of flowers that are, are growing up on the back side of the path, and they weren't there to start with. So we're going to be digging those out, and hopefully many of them will be uh, on the plant sale in the fall. We're, we're looking, uh, striving for September 12th, because we're going to have to make some money uh, in order to afford flowers again for next year. So. That was a, a struggle getting this cleaned out of weeds around the corner here. It was, yeah, uh, that was it was <laughs> a lot of weeds to yeah. remove. Right. Yeah. They did a and, good job. And a I steep think. slope. So yes, uh, and now we are this this one particular area right here is probably all going to get dug up um, because we we put some creeping jenny in there, and it, we're discovering that it just goes everywhere. It doesn't stay put like some of the other sedums. And then there's wild oregano, the, the girls tell me. And so we left a couple clumps because we did put some mulch around uh, some of the hostas. The hostas were planted one year after a plant sale. We had some extras left over. and. When I'm looking at them, they're they're definitely too much in the sun. They're getting too yep, bleached uh, out. Bleached yeah, out. They do. And so we probably are going to have to start looking for more sun tolerant pastas and replace them. What I like what the girls did here is they covered that hillside there with uh, with a little creeping as a sedum, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's a ground cover, and you can use that in your gardens when you have uh, areas like that. And you can still dig a hole and plant something nice in there, but and put some rocks in. It but does a very nice very job nice. of helping yeah. to hold the hill. It's a yeah, holds the soil back, so that's quite nice. And this end we found too is more has more a lot more clay in it. Sure. We did try to amend this year just where we planted the petunias because they're doing way better than they did last year. So mm -hmm. they they hardly grew last year. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's much better. Yeah. I think we're going to do a brief trip over to the bed on the other side yes. of uh, Kitty Castle here. Yes and see what the Master Gardeners have been working on in that bed, and then a quick stop over at the Roberts Road and Dale Street median bed that the Garden Club maintains. Well, we're over here in a, what we call the pollinator bed. This is one that the Master Gardeners are working on. It's very much still a work in progress. Uh, it took us almost three years to clear the quack out, get the rock in place, and put the pathways in. So we just started planting this a few years ago. Um, we're kind of trying to get things that are attractive to pollinators, so we've got some herbs in here, a few natives, lilies, uh, various things here, the oregano, some native grasses over here on this side, some day lilies, hydrangeas, and a lot of pastas in the shadier area. It's a little bit tricky in this bed because some of it's trial and error as to there's no one place in the bed that is total shade or total sun. 
So sometimes we've been trying things to see if they get enough sun there and then moving them around. But if uh, you know, you're out strolling and checking out the garden club bed, you may as well come over here and take a walk through on the pathway. Maybe have a seat on the bench and sit down and enjoy your lunch if you want or a snack and uh, just kind of walk through and see what we're doing here. It should hopefully only improve with time. So thank you for that and I think we're going to head over to the Roberts Road and Dale Street bed maintained by the Garden Club. So we're, we're here at the, the Roberts Road and uh, Dale Street Meridian bed and you see some of the work the ladies of the Garden Club have been doing. Uh, they've been doing this one for a long time. I think even longer than the fairgrounds yeah, bed. I think since 1925. Very nice ladies. Thank you all. And, <laughs> and those... we like all the people they tell us thank you as they drive by. <laughs> we get the comments like you can't believe even young men stop by and that their rock and roll music are playing, and they said, where can I get those kinds of flowers? <laughs> These are uh, across the uh, along the edge are pickle tea, and they are very popular with people. It seems like I'm seeing them in other people's gardens on a regular basis. And so we thought a border like this would be nice. In the past, we've done bubble gum, like you saw at the fairgrounds, the pink ones. But these really did mound well. Some petunias, they get strangly and they get long and then they don't do well in a garden like this. But these that mound and get into big clumps like this, they work really well on, on the, the out edges. edge. Okay. And this uh, coleus, yeah. the redhead, <laughs> will get about the salvia eventually. It was about three feet tall and three feet wide when it finished up last year here. And this whole garden was all red last year because we had one of our people wanted to do a monochrome garden. So we went with it and it was real popular, but mm -hmm. we decided if we have to do the coleus again, we're going to do a variety of color. And this has become really a popular one too. Um, we as a garden club are very fortunate to have this location because there is a, a center in here where the water comes in from the city. And so the city um, allows us to use the water. And so we just come in and turn it on. There's a little spigot over here. And uh, we have hoses in here, you can see. So the whole garden gets these hoses as soon after we plant. And then everything really gets beautiful like it is. Otherwise, I think it wouldn't look this way. <laughs> so we're thankful for the city, and we, that's what we get from them, is the water. So. <laughs>